questions here. Um, I I am always seeing out there about people um, saying should I go AMD, should I go Intel. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that have, you know, what they prefer. Me, personally, I'm a little bit more of an Intel guy when it comes to actually what I use just for, you know, a couple reasons, you know. Currently, AMD, they generally run higher TDP, uh, they more power consumption, but they do have a lot of benefits. And honestly, it's actually a very, very good solution, uh, depending on what you want out of it, what you want to do with it, and uh, also your price range. So the guys over at Linus Media Group, they did a test um, comparing the FX 8350, which is their flagship, most powerful processor they have. It is a 4.0 gigahertz 8 core that is two cores per module four modules four floating integers uh, with a turbo to 4.2 gigahertz versus the i5 3570k which is 3.4 gigahertz turbo 3.8 gigahertz um, and it is only a quad core now a Intel has had a big advantage when I start out with the Sandy Bridge over the uh, bulldozer architecture because there's a lot of flaws in the architecture of the bulldozer design over the Sandy Bridge uh, and I've covered that in other videos so I wanted to tell you guys that there is good reasons to go either way now a lot of it will have to do with you know do you want to overclock but generally speaking nowadays there's enough videos enough guides enough information on the Linus Tech Tip forums enough videos from Linus Media Group himself to show you guys how to overclock how to do it safely so they did a couple tests. I'm specifically pulling the part three and the part four test because that is comparing Windows 7 to Windows 8 because I want to factor that in too because he saw a lot of interesting information that isn't seen on the charge. What I'm going to go through is the first um, test which is without anti-aliasing but I do want to point out and this is why I have these tabs open is um, AMD is, is a bit of a cheaper route. Uh, the cheapest board that I would get would be a AM3 Plus 970 board with an 8 pin power connector. They run right now, then I have rebates turned off, they're running about $70. There's several, there's two at the 70, one at 73, 78, 79, 80 bucks. Now, Intel's come down a little bit on their prices. Now, Intel doesn't actually uh, decide what they charge because it's other manufacturers. They're down about $15 than what they were in the last couple of weeks. I didn't really realize there's a lot of Z77 boards. Now I will say that a lot of like the, I wouldn't get a G41 board. I'd lowest that goes like a G45. But for AMD, any pretty much 970 board I'd be okay with uh, for the most part. So and factor in that the price difference between the CPUs average about 30 board, 30 to 40 bucks. The boards are usually. 15 to 30 dollars so we're looking at a difference of upwards almost 70 dollar difference between the platforms uh, so AMD is definitely a better value for the price now I'm going to go through the first test here and this is going to be a PowerPoint here this is the methodology that they used um, for the Intel setup they went with 16 gig of 600 megahertz uh, Mushkin black line RAM nothing special H100i on open test bench, 850 watt power supply. Um, for both setups, they went with the GTX 660 power edition. It was overclocked pretty far. Uh, they do have that in the specs on one of the videos, and they show the drivers they used. The AMD setup. Now they are using higher higher level boards, but I will note that the Intel board is $50 more expensive, and it's the same tier, Intel versus AMD. So here's the first test, Far Cry 3. Um, Windows 8 is experiencing as a whole better minimum frame rates. Sometimes the average frame rates do drop down, but that is because the minimum's going up and the maximum's coming down. More fluid gameplay because the core allocation, the core execution in Windows 8 is much better in Windows 7. So especially like the FX8350 is utilizing um, these uh, the new uh, windows a lot better or vice versa windows utilizing the cores a lot better now i will say that both cpus are overclocked by 400 megahertz so the 53 or 3570k is at 4.2 and the 8350s at 4.6 so they're pretty much neck and neck here um there's obviously margin of error because they do a specific test they have the methodology in the videos which i will link their videos to all these as well uh but they're, i would say they're pretty much even uh one doesn't have advantage over the other as a whole um, and then you look at Crisis 3, which, as they noted, it went down in frame rates, but average frame rate or minimum frame rates went up. And that, again, has to do with how Windows 8 deals with cores and execution of the cores and things like that. So, again, very even. 
Um, Battlefield 3, although it's in margin of error, we do have to give it to the FX8350. Had a slight, consistently a slight uh, increase, I believe is what they noted. So, you know, they're still very even. Intel's not kicking AMD's ass in this scenario. Um, Skyrim, mm, they're not entirely sure why it was such a Intel win. Now, note that they're both over 60 frame rates on average, so it's very playable. Uh, they use like 18 or 20 mods from the Steam Workshop, so that may have an effect on it, how one CPU um, can execute certain mods versus the other, but it's clear that Intel and their s setup does win. So, uh, Dirt 3, uh, we saw that the average frame rates of the 3570K went down, but I mean, 150 frame rates per second doesn't matter if there's a 20 frame rate difference they're both way over what I you know I see people all the time talk about you know why wow, my frame rates World of Warcraft drop from from 120 to 80 I need to upgrade there's no point going over 60 I keep everything v-synced unless I have a frame rate issue like in Crisis 3 with one GPU so and Witcher 2 um, again a little better on the minimum frame rate still very close neck and neck I uh, really can't give this either one so and then Metro 2033 edging out within margin of error of the FX 8350. But the actual average frame rates went up on both, which is quite interesting that the AMD had a larger gain. So that probably has a lot to do with the fact that the extra cores are helping out or the extra clock speed or, or just the architecture design of the pile driver is more utilized than Windows 8. So, And then Crisis 2 we threw in there for the heck of it. It is an Intel win. It's actually outside margin of error by slight amount so but it is an older game with crisis 3 as you saw they're a lot closer so that is without anti-aliasing and now we're going to do with anti-aliasing so unless you're running 1600p you may want to actually turn up again testing methodology is the same 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 everything same drivers so far cry 3 was quite interesting um with 8x msaa which is the highest that would lead it to a 1080p massive increase I mean we're talking you go from 20 frame rates to 20 27 frame rates that's a 30 percent gain uh, on the, the um, i5 now the FX8350 only went up by a little bit so that tells me that uh, a lot of it has to do with the design of the processor is more utilized maybe things like the, the L3 cache is more utilized in this case so Crisis 3 um, they pretty much stayed the same um, Clearly, there's a bottleneck with the 660 Ti. Um, the play very high, very high maxed AA settings. You're gonna want either a Crossfire, SLI, Titan, um, bare minimum, or else you're not gonna get very good frame rates. So, Battlefield 3 went up slightly, uh, not much. Again, across the board, minimum frame rates have gone up. So, you know, that's definitely nice for Windows 8. Uh, Skyrim a lot closer in this case which is nice to see that there's not a big difference it's still an Intel win clearly but it's a lot closer and they're still above the playable range which is nice so with all those texture packs and all those add-ons and mods and everything it's still very playable even at 8x anti-aliasing. Um, Dirt 3 uh, really didn't see much of a jump on average across the board. Uh, it is a win for AMD though. It seems that Windows 8 was a lot better to AMD in this case. Not by a big margin. We're only talking about five frame rates, so just a couple percentage. So it's still within air. Witcher 2, not much to say. AMD pretty much the same. Intel went up slightly within margin of error as well. So. Uh, Metro 2033, this is interesting because AMD increased by, it looks to be about six, about six and a half frames, so a little over 10%, whereas Intel pretty much stayed the same, so, you know, I'm interested to see, like, the Metro last light benchmark, and that's going to be interesting. Uh, Crisis 2, uh, Intel win, really not much of a gain here for either one, looks to be the same, so, so that's the end of that. Now, I've personally not managed to use um, Windows 8 much. I had a problem with it when it first came out. Um, you have to get your, your Windows Live account in sync to install your games. It can be a pain. Um, there is a lot of interfaces out there that you can download to put over top Windows 8 to make it work a lot like Windows 7. But it seems that across the board, Windows 8 may not improve the average frame rates, but it's improving the experience by having better core execution on either Intel or AMD CPUs which is definitely a plus so you know 
if you're not in the Windows 8 yet, do I recommend it? It's kind of up in the air. I'm still working on getting it myself. You know, for my next build, I'm thinking about doing that. But, you know, as you guys see, pretty much the FX8350 just keeps up, um, you know, with Intel. I mean, there was only the one game, Skyrim. Uh, with no anti aliasing internal where Intel just gave it to them. And there was a couple games that the FX8350 won a little bit. Um, you know, obviously the FX8350 is 125 watt TDP, so it does draw more power. It's going to run naturally harder. You're going to get a little bit better cooling. Now, compared to Ivy Bridge that has a thermal dynamic problem with the um, 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 the thermal compound, excuse me, in you know on the actual die itself, which you can replace, which voids the warranty. But, you know, it, it, AMD's becoming very aggressive, and it's really interesting that, you know, they're coming behind from the big drop of the bulldozer architecture that was one of the catastrophic worst launches ever, performed poorly across the board, and now they're actually being competitive. And with Steamroll on the horizon, they're looking at, they're saying, hey, look, this is what's wrong with the CPU. The cache latency is still too high. The IPCs are still a little lower than we liked. We unfortunately can't fix the pipeline issue, but if we increase the IPCs, it'll help negate the problem. They're actually coming on saying, this is the issues we have. We know about it. It translates into a game performance loss, and we're going to fix it. On top of, I'm going to do another video here shortly about the graphics card show now, which is going to be interesting as well. So, Anyway, guys, thanks as always. Subscribe, like the video. Props to the Linus Media Group for doing, for getting all the information used here. They did it all. Um, I'm just simply just retelling about it for those of you that may not be part of that community, but part of mine. So thank you guys. You guys do good work over there. As, al as always, like, subscribe to um, the channel in the video, and head over to Linus Tech Tip Forums. Subscribe to them. Subscribe to Linus Tech Tips on his YouTube channel for other tech-related information. And always, guys, thank you very much.